episode of Princess Cinema is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes on all sorts of different creative topics. Each class is taught by professionals who actually work in the industry. A premium membership will get you unlimited access to whichever classes you feel are right for you. Uh, fun fact, they wanted to give me a free trial to test it out, but I've legit already had Skillshare for like the past six months. I'm trying to work my way up to be an actual filmmaker, not just the dude who roasts movies on the internet. I mean, it's cool, I'm not complaining, but certain classes like iPhone filmmaking by Caleb Babcock and micro budget filmmaking by Dustin Murphy, they taught me how to ball on a budget and get professional looking movies with just an iPhone and a few lights. I feel like I've learned almost enough to make my own proper hood movies now, so be on the lookout for that. Y'all watch my movies, right? Hell no. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, your creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the best place to truly find inspiration, regardless of your skill level. They also have classes covering topics like music production, creative writing, acting, video editing, all that, dog. All that, dog. And it's ad-free all the time, so you can really stay focused and get in your mode. The first thousand subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of premium membership. Get them creative juices flowing. There's endless possibilities no matter what your passion is. If you're creative, whether you're a pro or a beginner, Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and your skill level. Again, follow the link in the description and get a one month free trial of premium membership. Thanks a lot Skillshare for sponsoring the video. Time to watch the movie now. It starts off with these horribly misspelled credits. Oh my God. Le Dan's Tenman? Everything is a gift of the Ernfs? They just translated all for us anyway. Why even write it like this? They definitely trying to make me sad on purpose. I see what you're doing, movie. That's pretty cheap. It had the opposite effect too, by the way. That shit is hilarious. No, it's not. It did make me sad a little bit. So the movie takes place in Harlem in the 80s. It's an 80s hood movie. Our main character's name is Precious, based on the novel Push by Sapphire. She real big boned and she be having a hard time in school, apparently. She got so many problems and she can't concentrate on her work at all. I don't say nothing. I don't open my book either. You know what I'm saying? I just sit there. You down? It's on your head. I like Smith Witcher. I pretend he's my husband. Boys, boys, Not your boys. fucking boy. You're disrupting the class. Yeah, well, I'm talking now. Quiet now. Shut the fuck up. I'm trying to listen. No, you weren't. You just said you ain't even opened the damn book up. I don't open my book either. Also, notice how she shut the entire classroom down, though. She definitely be whooping niggas' ass in this school. She not just talking. I beat the shit out one of these niggas, boy. Precious, quiet. Precious. I'm at the, go to the principal's office. Precious gets called into the principal's office, where just right off the bat, the principal is extremely nosy about her personal life. You're 16, you're still in junior high school, and you're pregnant with your second child. This should sound like the opening monologue to an episode of Maury. Everyone, this is Precious. Alright, well then how about if I come to your house? If I were you, I wouldn't. If something's going on at home, I want you to tell me right now. After her failed Vlad TV interview with Precious, the principal pulls up outside her house with no security to inform her that Mr. Witcher has just recommended her for the Each One Teach One Alternative Learning Program, and also to see if Precious was going to keep that same energy. Mrs. Lucius Dean, get out of here before I kick your ass. So I called Mrs. McKnight from Higher Education Alternative. Each One Teach One. Get and that's what started a few days of that you know, that's bitch. Bitch. 11th floor. We find out that Precious is 16 in the 7th grade. God damn, man. That's not even funny. I mean, it is a little bit, but not that much. It's more sad than funny. Don't laugh. Also, what's up with these old ass niggas? Are they in the 7th grade too? This nigga got a whole ass goatee, bro. Why don't y'all get on them? I don't know what an alternative school is. I feel I want to know. Oh, fuck! You gonna send a white bitch to my motherfucking buzzer? Talking about some higher education, you're a dummy bitch. You done fucked around and fucked my motherfucking man and had two motherfucking children, bitch. Get the fuck out of here. Now smile about that. Smile about that, you fat bitch. This nigga gon' die. Precious lives at home with her abusive ass mom. She's like the main villain or whatever. She's played by Monique. 
It's a good ass performance, Monique. Clearly, she got an Oscar for this shit. It's definitely not fun to watch though. She's actually pretty vicious. It's terrifying. She be whooping Precious ass and forcing her to cook dinner every night. It's like pig's feet and fried chicken and some more shit. Fuck y'all the clumps. Pig feet and fried chicken at the same time? Do y'all really need both proteins, bro? You ain't cooking no collard greens with the fucking pig's feet? And when I say she be whooping Precious ass, I don't mean regular ass whoopings. I mean, she knocks this teenage girl unconscious multiple times throughout the movie. You get my cigarettes? Nah, they ain't have it. Yeah, that's also a thing in this movie. She be having like these bizarre ass hallucinations all the time. It's pretty scary. That's all that pig feet and shit you be eating every night. But she's a teenager. She don't really get to choose what she eats. And that's part of the sadness. Sad hood movie. Uh, Precious, you know I love you. I'm gonna kick that white lady out of my house. Isn't this like a like a family book? What the hell is he doing there? After a much needed shower and pretending to be a white woman in the mirror, Precious gets ready for her day of school while her mother is doing the strange. First thing in the morning. Come take your mommy, Precious. Oh no, what does that mean? That's why God or whoever makes new days. Still hungry though. What you want, baby? Give me a basket, please. You got a ten piece ready. But you evicted now. Spot my heart, baby. Uh-uh, get her ass. Precious ends up boom ganging this 10 piece chicken and she's just fucking annihilating that shit, bro. That shit never stood a chance. Did you have to eat it while you were running though? You couldn't wait till you got to safety or something? She brings the whole bucket to school with her too. That's probably hilarious to see. It's like eight in the morning. You really ate 10 pieces of chicken for breakfast though? Pass tense, tell I roll past my crib and I'm blasting. You can tell this was pre-Rona. She licking her fingers and shit after after digging in the trash and pressing the elevator button. Ew. Nice. Well, at least you didn't pay for it. Are you coming in? That door closes in 20 seconds. One eternity later. After the well over 20 seconds it took for Precious to finally make it into the classroom, she initially declines to introduce herself to the class. Can I skip soup? But then has the audacity to wait till after everybody is already gone and the lesson has started to finally build up the courage to make her presence known. Let's begin. This is A B E. Can I go? Bruh, 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 bruh. Like, uh, I guess. Make way for Precious, everybody. This her world and shit. We all just happen to be living on her time. My name Clarice Precious Jones. I go by Precious. Something you do well? Nothing. Everybody's good at something. Well, I could cook. Apparently not. You ain't cooking no collard greens with the fucking pig's feet? And why the fuck does that pig's feet have so much hair in it? She really critiquing the fuck out of this meal like she's Gordon Ramsay. We fucking wasted the most expensive half. Are hey, you? Take that with you. Get out of my fucking sight. I'll be okay, I guess. Because I'm looking up. They gotta stop smoking them shits, man. Oh, let me get some of that sweet ass, Oka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Let me go. Let me hit that. <laughs> Did that guy just fucking kill the baby? Is this what the '80s was? You just got pressed out by a bunch of everybody hates Chris background characters on your way home from each one teach one. Little girl from across the street. Let me hold myself in contempt of court of law when I get charged for smushing this premature infant. Fresh Prince of Bel Air ass outfits. That man posing like he finna be on a DGK shirt. I'm on that ass. I'm on that ass. These were the guys up to no good, making trouble in the neighborhood like shit. Except this young lady doesn't have the luxury to move with her auntie in Bel Air. She's stuck getting her fucking ears licked by this raggedy ass street dog because y'all wanted to be a couple knuckleheads. Ah! It is broad day. 
on a weekday. If you don't go fill out a job application. <laughs> That's what she get anyway. Nah. So Precious is unconscious again. Damn, bro. Why is she so easy to knock out? He ain't even push you that hard. Nah, it's not cool though. Don't, you shouldn't push random people and knock them out. She has another one of these fucking weird ass quick time events. What did she fucking die and go to heaven now? What is this? It's like family guy random cutaways. Is any of this important? Should I be paying attention to this? She's always hallucinating that she got the same sexy ass light skinned boyfriend. He keeps popping up all the time at all her events. He a good boyfriend. Also, she keeps imagining herself as this white lady, this old ass white lady. Aren't you like 16? Why don't you pick a younger white lady to be? All jokes aside, she's got some pretty bad hood PTSD and I'm guessing this is like her safe space. The hallucinations and the light skinned boyfriend. It's pretty sad, man. I'm making jokes, but it's real shit and it's real sad. Help her. E. E. <laughs> you know, no bullshit, man. That was good ass timing. Why didn't nobody laugh at that? Precious gets into a fight with the damn catch me outside girl. She doesn't get in trouble though. The teacher is like a real nice lady who care about the children and stuff. Her name is Miss Rain. She's trying to teach Precious how to read and everything, but Precious can't concentrate on all that because her life's so sad, remember? All I need you to do is sound out these words for me. Are you listening to me? Precious! I just want to know where you are because I'm looking at your tent. Oh, some high of fucking mind. Against you better than your mother. I'm not a nurse. No. Push yourself. A. Everybody in the world love to go clubbing and that's the This is the one. Need to forget about that school shit and take your ass down to the welfare. You're getting the stipend for school. Fool, what the fuck is a stipend? What is that? Fuck a stipend. Precious takes her ass down to the welfare. She meets up with this social worker so she can get some more money or benefits or something. The social worker is played by Mariah Carey fine ass. She in the movie. She looking kind of busted here, oh but that's God. okay actually. I like it. She look like she's obtainable here. You know what I'm saying? My mother's like a whale on the couch. She say I eat all the time, but she always making me eat. How about your first one? Mongo? Mongo. That's short for Mongoloid. Excuse me? Who let her mom write that on the birth certificate? That's psychotic. That's not regular poverty anger. That's some other shit. What is wrong with you? What would Professor Ogilvy think if he saw you like this, right? This lady belongs in a mental hospital, bro. She probably love that shit. You get to watch TV all day. Somebody would probably take care of you. You might as well. I see vampires too. They say pressures. You belong with us. That's in welfare checks. Precious ends up messing up their whole welfare situation. Mariah Carey's gonna take their welfare away now. That's kind of fucked up. She told you all the shit going on in her house, right? That's your way of helping her? That's some good social working. She probably gonna die now. This nigga gonna die. They have this educational montage now. Precious learns how to read and write and all that. They going on field trips and fun activities or something. All the girls in her class are her friends now too. She got friends now. It's really happy. I'm sure it'll stay this way forever. A magical princess who lived in a magical bubble under the sea. His name, Abdul Jamal Lewis Jones. Bro, why the fuck he got so many names? Abdul Jamal Lewis Jones? This nigga middle name is Jamal Lewis? Ah, uh, whatever. It's better than Mongoloid, hell yeah. Food in this hospital is nasty. You bring me something? I don't like fruit. I like McDonald's. Oh, we like McDonald's too. Yeah. Over here. Mm -hmm. I don't like no damn McDonald's. Are you a doctor? I am a male nurse. <laughs> I am nurse. John McFadden. I wish I was a cantaloupe in that car. <laughs> oh. This nigga Maxwell in the movie, or whoever the fuck this is, one of them niggas, man. D'Angelo is not important. He real handsome, I guess, and he makes Precious feel better about men. He's just a good guy. If you get your GED, you go to college, you can do anything, Precious. Mm. I'm 
bored. I'm about to leave. Bye, Mr. Tennessee. You got a nasty ass mouth. You got a nasty ass hat. Get out! I'm proud of you. Ain't nothing like your mother. Where was your grandmother when your father was abusing you? It took an hour of this film to finally start asking some important questions. Come on, Grandma. Stop turning up the TV. Come help out a little. She looking out the window like she in a goddamn Beats headphone commercial. Well, you can tell everybody. Hey, precious. You look like his daddy. <laughs> you bitch! <laughs> you done took my man, you had those fucking babies, and you got me put off the welfare from running your goddamn stupid ass mouth! Mary, that down low. Grandma, now is not the time. <laughs> we like to share it all special. Oh. Nice, another attempted murder. And eventually we get to a point in this movie where we just have to ask ourselves why. You've been having this Gucci and Jeezy level ass beef with your daughter because you're mentally sick in the head husband. Great job picking him out, by the way. Prefers to molest his child than have consensual sex with you? It's like, what the fuck am I watching right now? And now she's sick as shit because she realizes she doesn't have a TV anymore. Look how she runs up these stairs. To the 40, to the 30, to the 20. They all trying to take your money. They don't. 16 years old. A three-day-old infant. Baby not bleeding. I think it's precious blood. <laughs> Why is the baby wrapped up in the blood covered blanket? <laughs> John, what's so funny? No, for real, what happened? Oh, that's funny? But F for fat is not funny? Y'all inconsistent, bro. A baby covered in blood is definitely not funny. Miss Rain helps Precious get into a halfway house and she works real hard in school. She even earns some literacy award from the mayor's office. Everything's going pretty great until the mom shows back up and of course she doesn't have anything good to fucking say. Your daddy did. He had that AIDS virus. You got it? No. How you know? We never did it up in the ass, so I know. <laughs> Nurse say I'm HIV positive. Your baby loves you. I love you. Okay, Mrs. Johnston, let's talk about the abuse. There wasn't no drugs in my house. <laughs> Precious was born around the same time Miss West's son got killed the summertime remember remember that i was born in november did she really just ask her daughter remember the time you were born that's a vicious she got that shit wrong oh this mother is just the fucking worst so whose fault was it's it it's this bitch's fault because she let my man have her and she didn't say nothing she didn't scream she didn't do nothing man the victim blaming in this scene is through the roof. Look at Precious facial expression. She even knows that's some bullshit. Like, God damn, mom, you're going outside to the social worker right now. Count your fucking oh. days. You know, when you sit back and you analyze the full spectrum of all this, like, that man really fucked up this entire family. Like, she's still an awful mother regardless. But it makes you sit back and really think, like, how differently things might have been if the dad just, you know, didn't molest his kid. But then again, it probably would have happened anyways, because, like, she still took care of mommy. Come take care of mommy, precious. She still took care of mommy. She over here talking about some who was gonna love me. No, I never knew what you was until this day. You ain't gonna see me no more. Bye. Am I missing something about this happy ending? She still has AIDS in the 80s. HIV, to be scientifically correct if it's like early on in the stages, but uh, yeah, guess she doesn't get a happy ending. As she heads towards her own death, she can know that a happy ending may be possible for her child. That was wild. Precious's life was just awful. I mean, what the fuck could she have possibly done to deserve this outcome of life? Cause I'm telling you right now, if that was my life, I'm finna beat God's ass. 
sorry, Jesus, but I gotta give your dad a vicious case of the beats. If this is the fucking timeline of my life, from getting r since the age of three to birthing two incest babies and catching AIDS and dying before 18, all while this abusive ass mother is trying to take my head off every chance that she can. Oh yeah, they're gonna need security for my ass, but boy, better call for backup. Overall, this is a really good movie. Not for my peace and sanity, but as a film that stood the test of time. It's got everything you'd want in a good film. Great acting, character development. But I think it's important for us to acknowledge the real hero in this movie that really comforted and supported Precious during her darkest times. Who knows how much worse her life would have been without this figure present. So with the powers invested in me, shout out to you, imaginary light-skinned boyfriend. You really held it down like no one else could. Thanks for watching this sad ass, depressing ass shit. Thank you Crocodile Yo for joining me today. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring. I'll be back next time with some fun hood movies. Monica All-Star, she didn't get an All-Star. I didn't give her an All-Star yet. What else you want me to say, man? This shit was sad as hell. It's impossible to make some shit like this funny. It's too realistic, I think. I gotta pick my movies better, bro. Anyway, get the fuck out of here. Go do something else now. The video over. Wah, wah, who got a friend who loves me?